There we are. Hello. Give me a big hello in the live comments, by the way. So I'm Bill McIntosh. I'm the host today, and I've got some awesome stuff to go over with you today. So I have a few different things we're going to be covering today. One of them is really cool. Um, and so first up, let's do a quick tech check. Make sure mic is working. Make sure you can hear me all right. Sound quality, is it okay? Uh, I got the mic in a little bit of a different position today and uh, make sure you can see me, you can hear me and that we are all good to go. So give me a hello in the comments. Hey, there we go. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Got some hellos going. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, we have um, quite a few people here who I can see are customers of Push Button AI. So we're going to be talking about push button AI today. We're going to be talking about some really clever ways that you can use it, but I've also got some great content that's suited for just about anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur and grow their business or start a brand new business. That's going to be our topic today. And today I have several things we're going to cover. First up, number one, we will be covering how to create so-called, I'll put air quotes, faceless video content so that you don't have to put your face or even your voice on your video content. And you can use it for stuff like creating faceless social media channels. So this is great for short form content, for blowing up a channel and getting short form content out there. I'll show you some case studies of people who have done just that with their faceless YouTube channels. But this can also be used on Instagram, on TikTok and other places, especially where short form content is king. So I'll show you how you can use some awesome new AI tech I'll show you some examples of how I've used it. And it's not just limited to social media and channels. I'm using this technique that the, I'll be showing you to create ads. So we're actually using AI. They're AI-generated advertisements that uh, they're bringing us a lot of revenue, a lot of customers, a lot of people coming to register for my webinars and other things. I'll show you some examples of the ads I'm literally running right now. And I'll show you how it all works. Um, in the first segment. So that's what we're going to cover first. Second up, we're going to be talking about how to make your AI content undetectable. And I'm live without a net with you guys here. So I am actually going to try to create some undetectable AI content. And uh, we'll cross your fingers, the, the technique that I, I perfected this technique about a month ago, and it just worked like crazy and it actually uses two different ai tools to create content that is undetectable so if you're at all worried about whether google is going to be upset at you for using ai content well use this strategy i'm about to show you and your worries will go away but also don't forget google officially says that you can use ai content you don't have to hide it if you don't want to but if you do want to hide it i'll show you exactly how using some really easy tools we got some prompts that you can use to do that and a bunch of other things for making your AI content sort of like it's a, a secret spy content, right? That's like undercover, <laughs> I guess you could say. So uh, I'll be covering that. I'll show you how to do that. And then finally, we're going to be talking about our commission chain reaction training series. So we're going to be starting out with the first lesson in commission chain reaction. And when we get to that, I'm going to be talking about how you can actually create a very intriguing business model where you have a course that earns you affiliate commissions and you can get free traffic. I'll show you how you get free traffic. You build a course, you make a bunch of affiliate commissions from it, and it is really cool and really, really powerful. So that'll be the other thing we'll be sharing. Then of course, all the resources that I use. So for example, we have prompts. I have a spreadsheet I'm going to be showing you. I have some other tools that we've created for you. I've got a list of niche markets, a bunch of goodies. All of our push button AI customers get all that stuff. They will always get all of that stuff. So if you're a push button AI customer, we'll be sharing all that with you. And then of course, if you're a channel member, you'll also get access to the prompts and resources as well. So push button AI customers get everything. And if you're a channel member, then um, you will have access to our prompts and links and resources from these shows. So uh, with that, that's our agenda for the day. How does that sound? Which of those three things are you most interested in? So we got 
the faceless videos that you can use for advertisements or social media channels. Number one, we've got, number two, we have how to make your AI content undetectable. And then finally, number three, it's how to set off a commission chain reaction. Which one are you most looking forward to? I'm gonna check it out here in the chat and uh, see, well, kind of, I'll be the one I'll try to spend the most time on. So, oh, okay, all three. Well, okay, that's good. I like that, I like that answer. Uh, chain reaction, that's a, another vote for that. Um, number one, okay, good. That is the, the AI video content. All right, fantastic. And um, okay, that's all the votes that have come in. So you guys are kind of quiet out there today. Okay, all three. Okay, Blake also voted for all three. All right, well, I'm covering all three. Um, so today's show um, is going to be packed full of content. So of course, I need to caffeinate myself to get prepared. All right. And on that, we're off. So I'm going to get my trusty teleprompter set. Um, I am uh, just a reminder for the live audience. I am recording all of these sessions um, for our channel. So whether it's for our channel or for training that we're putting in our members area, this is uh, so we do these little takes where I'm recording each segment specifically for me to use later. So if you wonder why I might uh, pause or make notes for my editor or things like that, uh, you'll know what that's about. So we're going to get started with the first segment, number one. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. AI video content is all the rave right now. And that is because it's easy to get traffic, easy to get money, and it's easy to help build your business in a way that was never possible before. And I will show you a couple of AI tools that you can use. One of them's free that you can create videos to use on social media channels. You can use it on short form channels like TikTok, uh, Instagram. Uh, people are blowing up YouTube channels. You know, there's a name for this. These faceless YouTube channels is kind of the, the name that everybody's talking about. So I'll show you how to use this for short form content to really build a big following quickly in all of these social channels and right here on YouTube. So we're going to be getting into that. I'll share the resources. I'll show you how it works. I'll show you some examples of channels that are just blowing up using strategies like this. And I will show you some examples. These are live ads that I'm actually running paid advertisements that are video content, 100% AI generated. I didn't have to use my own voice, didn't have to use my face. It's all AI generated video content. And it's a tool that you can create these ads for free. And in fact, I'm gonna show you a couple live examples or ads that I'm running right now at the time of this broadcast. And I'll show you the ads that I'm running. I'll show you which ones are working the best and uh, I did them for free. So the tool was used, we used a free account to create the ads that are literally sending me hundreds of customers and a lot of leads that are working really, really well. In fact, right now, our number one best performing ad that we're running on Facebook is using AI content. I'm gonna show you our number one ad in uh, just, uh, just a, a few minutes as an example. So um, now you can get millions of views and thousands of dollars in revenue just by reading a script basically in your mic without having to show your face. And you can go beyond that where you don't even have to use your voice. You don't have to use your microphone. You can actually have AI do it for you. And I'll show you some examples of this right now. And what they do is uh, one of the channels I'm gonna show you here is someone who just reads a script. So he uses his own voice but he's reading a script, but he is not the face of the channel. And um, there are several examples of people doing either with their own voice, but without their face, or they don't use their own voice or their own face. So with these numbers that these channels are putting out, um, they're I'm sure they're profiting like crazy. And you can make content just like theirs using AI. So let me show you. I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to pull it up. We'll do this bit here and let me find the window. I've got like a billion windows going. Okay, here we are. 
So this channel, um, you can see here, is three, almost three and a half million subscribers, okay? And he uses his own voice, but none of these pieces of content are him. None of them are him. He's just reading over other people's content. And uh, to you, I just want to use this as a, as a really shining example of why you do not need to use your own face to be able to have a social media presence and have a big channel. His is just voice only. He doesn't show his face. Let's look at a couple others. So here's one here. Uh, again, using his own voice, but he's he does these um, uh, sort of stock images and stock photos uh, as he reads his script. And um, you can see here, this is over a million subscribers on this one. And we got this one here. This is another faceless channel. And you can see examples of how that works. And uh, so again, just reading a voice, looking at a channel. Um, here's one here that again, same thing. This is not um, using their own voice. I think this is completely AI if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and they are not using um, their face on camera. You. Here we go. Be proud of how hard you are trying. So AI voice, simple slideshows. Back. And you saw if we go back to their channel stats, a million subscribers. Okay. So these are very over the top examples. But it is showing you as uh, an idea of, I want to dispel the myth that you have to um, somehow have uh, you know, your own face and uh, um, your own voice to be able to have a huge social media presence. It's just not necessary in today's world. Uh, and again, we'll show you examples and I'm going to show you how to make the kind of videos that I've been making um, and, and you'll see from there, okay? So that example, that final channel, everything on there from A to Z is made with AI. And you get you can build these like literally the script, like you can just start out with an idea, nothing more than a simple idea. You can have AI generate your script, do the voice, do the visuals. Every step of the process can be done by AI. And then of course, if you wanna use your own voice, you can do that too. If you want to be involved in the creativity of the script, you can do that too, but you don't have to. You could just literally go from beginning to end 100% with AI. Um, and there are strategies, uh, uh, channels like this that are just blowing up with this strategy. So I'm gonna show you how to do this step by step. So we're gonna start out with number one. We're gonna write a script with AI. We're gonna, I'll pull up the screen. We're gonna walk through this together. So we're gonna uh, use real content. And what we're going to do is we're gonna find some other successful YouTube videos that we know have gotten a lot of interest. YouTube videos that are, are doing well. And they're in a niche um, that, uh, uh, yeah, that is gonna work really well. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna show these, we're gonna use chat GPT and we're gonna feed it the content from some other videos. And then from that, we're going to have it write a really good original script, right? We're not copying what the other channel's doing. We're using them from inspiration because we know that this is a topic and this is a subject that is doing well on YouTube. So we're gonna start out with the title of the video and go from there. Now, remember, we're gonna use, um, let's pull this up here and I'm gonna show you how this works. Go back to screen share. I'll pull this around. Now we're going to use Chat GPT, and using Chat GPT to do this. Remember, for what I'm about to show you, you're going to want to use Code Interpreter. Okay, so highlight over Chat GPT, which you'll need one of their paid accounts. It's a twenty dollar a month account to do this. Go highlight over Ch GTP4 and select Code Interpreter. If you don't have Code Interpreter available here. Go in your settings, go under settings in beta, and then be sure here under beta features and turn it on, okay? So here's where you turn on some of their experimental features, okay? So you just come right here to code interpreter and turn it on. And you can see my uh, video that we did last week. I'll link to that into the channel. 
Um, but we really went into a deep dive on how to use what's called code interpreter, which lets you upload files and have it literally creates like a program that runs by the AI that can analyze documents and analyze files and uh, read transcripts and do all kinds of cool stuff. So if you want a deep dive on code interpreter, see my previous video. But uh, here we're going to use code interpreter and I'm going to just get going here. OK, now remember that regular chat GPT, you know, just like over here, GTP 3.5, it can't accept files. OK, you can't upload files. You can't have it process files. But when you use code interpreter, you'll notice we have a little thing here. We can upload files and have it actually work with those files. OK, so now that you've got code interpreter opener open, we're going to get chat GPT to write our scripts. And again, we're going to feed chat GPT um some ideas and for this little demo we're going to be using the topic of stoicism and discipline so you may be familiar with this market stoicism is a philosophy and it's a philosophy that a lot of young men are recently that's kind of become a fad in the success and personal development niche it's actually a philosophy that i actually agree with quite a bit of some of its teachings and stoicism is actually a really viable great way to sort of run your life run your business and be successful, okay? So the idea is we're gonna use that niche for this video. And that's the idea we're gonna use um, for this demo I'm gonna make, okay? So I already went out and found successful videos on this topic, okay? So I just went on YouTube, I did some research and we found some videos that are popular and that we know are doing really well, okay? So we're gonna be starting out here with a prompt um, that we're going to be using to get some titles for our video. Okay, so let me get my my notes going here. Okay, so where is my prompt? Okay, here we are. So I'm going to copy my prompt. And again, anybody who is a channel member or is a customer of Push Button AI is going to get this prompt. We'll give it to you right here. Okay. So what we did is we actually, I'm going to explain this. Okay. So uh, we're telling you it, it's a YouTube expert who creates scripts, titles, and so forth. Um, we're asking it to write 10 catchy video titles um, with a hook for the topic idea of stoicism and discipline. So here's where you would put your niche market right there. Okay. Notice we put it there in the quotes. The title should draw inspiration from these five successful YouTube videos in the niche. And then um, um, we have their, their instructions there, okay? And then uh, one of the things that I'm gonna do is, um, one thing I'm looking here, okay, looking at instruct, okay, good. So then from here, we're just going to hit submit. So it's going to give us some example titles, okay? And we're going to have 10 of them. And usually they're pretty darn good, okay? So we have 10 potential titles for our new YouTube video. And we can pick one of those. So you can pick any one of the titles, pick your favorite out of those, and then you would move on to the next part. So let's say... Let's say we want to take this one, okay? So just copy it and then save it offline and paste it into, you know, your notes, okay? Now, we're going to move on to step two, and this is going to be your outline for the video, okay? So uh, once you've picked your favorite of the 10 titles, now we're going to move on to the next part. And here, we're going to be making an outline. We're going to have an outline for our video script, okay? So... For this one, we're going to need now need to feed ChatGPT the title that we just selected. Okay. And um, I'll show you how to do that in a second. And uh, let's pull this. I'm going to get the prompt. This is set prompt number two that I'm going to use now. So we're going to um, pop it in here. Here's our prompt. And then we're asking it to remember it's a YouTube expert. OK, um, and we're asking it to create a content outline for a script of a five minute YouTube video in English. OK, so now you could say a two minute video, a one minute video, a 30 second video, whatever that might be. 
and we're telling it we want the content to include 20 headings and subheadings. You can also adjust this number depending on how long you want your video, okay? And then the outline should be extensive, should cover the entire topic, create detailed subheadings, um, do not self-reference, and so forth. So now, um, realize one part here. This is why we're using code interpreter. Um, uh, it says right here, I am going to attach a file with the transcript of a very successful YouTube video that covered the same topic. Use this to assist in the creation of the outline. Do you understand? Okay, so watch this. So now what I'm going to do is um, I am going to attach a file by clicking the little button. And then here's the video transcript. And all I did is I copy and pasted the transcript. And if um, you're not sure about how to do that, we covered that in last week's session about how to use um, YouTube transcripts and, um, and code interpreter. So you can re reference that other video. If you don't know how to get the transcript, it's really easy. It explains it in that previous video. Okay. Now we're gonna, so what we've done is we've attached a transcript and here I can just show you what it looks like if you wanna see. This is the transcript. It's just literally a transcript of the entire video that we found, the successful YouTube video that we found, okay? And again, if you're not sure how to get this, see last week's video, we'll link to it when we post this to the channel. And now we've uploaded the file, we've put in our prompt and we're gonna hit submit. Okay, now it's gone to work. Pretty cool, right? So we've uploaded that script of the successful video. It's done its analysis and it is now writing our outline. It's looking pretty good. What do you think? Okay, so uh, we'll let it continue and it's going with the conclusion. And now with this outline complete, we can write the entire script for our AI avatar to read. So we're gonna create a script and then we're going to get an AI avatar to read the script for us and be on camera so that I don't have to, okay? Now, before you dive into the body of the script, we need a good hook, okay? So a hook is the thing that grabs someone's attention and gets them to want to um, actually watch the video, okay? So we need to hook their attention in the first few seconds of the video or they won't watch. So this is really important. So we're now gonna use a prompt to get our hook. Just before, we go, we're gonna do our full video script in just a moment, but before we do, we have prompt number three to get our hook, our powerful, emotionally compelling hook that grabs the reader or the viewer's attention and, um, um, and, you know, and, and gets them to watch, okay? So let me get my prompt up here. And again, all of these prompts are for channel members. You'll all get the full prompt, uh, as well as anybody who is a push button AI customer will get all prompts and all resources, okay? So this is our prompt and we're also reminding it, it's an expert writer. Um, we're asking for it to write a compelling script introduction paragraph. Um, utilize, and is it going through here? Um, again, we'll share this with you, but it, we're basically just asking it to give us a compelling uh, uh, introduction, okay? There we go. So it is actually giving us a pretty cool introduction. And it even says right there, stick around to delve into the ancient philosophy that holds the key to unlocking your untapped potential. Pretty cool. That is a very good uh, um, intro and hook. So we would actually now copy this. So we've got our title. We then copy, we have our intro uh, for the intro of our video. And, um, and now we're prepared to have it go on and do the body of the video, okay? Um, and remember the cool thing here is chat GPT, because we're using code interpreter, it still has in its memory the previously successful YouTube video. It's remembering it because we uploaded it in this conversation. Does that make sense? Okay. So now we're gonna use this prompt. I'm, I'm gonna give you another prompt here. This is prompt number four, and we're gonna use it to write out each portion of the outline. We're gonna ask it bit by bit to extend the outline and turn it into a fully fledged script, okay? 
So for the purpose of this training, I'm just gonna show you the, how this works. We're not gonna take it all the way through to the end for the saving of time. Um, but I'm gonna show you a little bit about how this works. So here is our next prompt, which again, I'm sharing with channel members and push button AI customers. And um, we're reminding it, it's a YouTube content creator. And we're giving you instructions that it's writing out scripts. We're telling it what tone of voice to use conversational writing style. Please continue the script leaving off from the last point you are now writing for segment one. Okay. And we are then going to submit this. Okay. So we're just telling it to write the next segment of the script. There we go. That is the next segment of the script. It's going to write it out. Cool. So, and then from here, we just keep prompting it and having it extend it. Okay. And um, we're going to then, um, um, we just go through bit by bit and we tell it to continue to extend this and make it longer until we have all the content that we need and that it's uh, going well. Okay. So we, we now have um, uh, several things. So let's recap here for a moment. You have a script, you have your introduction, your compelling hook with the introduction, you have your video title, and now you're ready to go and get voice. So there's a variety of ways to do this to get your script voiced, okay? Now we're gonna have an AI actually read this for us. We're actually not, I'm not going to read it myself. I'm gonna get an AI to do this. And to do that, we're gonna be using a tool called 11 Labs to actually read out our script. And this is a really cool tool that lets you make real sounding customizable AI voices to read just about anything with, okay? You can even clone voices, okay? So today we're not gonna get into that. Maybe I'll do that in a future show, but you could clone your own voice or other people's voices and get it to read content for you in their voices. Now, technically you can use the free version of 11 Labs, um, but you, do, you don't have a legal license to use it for commercial purposes. So if you're using it in like ads and other places like that, you definitely want to upgrade uh, to a premium, you know, a paid plan, okay? So uh, I'll, I'll put more about that in the video description below, okay? Although with just five bucks a month, five bucks, you can have a commercial license and then you don't have to worry about it, okay? So, uh, and the first month is only a buck. So I think they have a dollar trial. Okay, so um, we're going to be using that to build out our script. Okay, so let me take, go back to screen sharing. And um, we're going to go up here. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take our intro and copy that. We're going to come over here to 11 labs. And we're going to just... Um, we come in here, we're under speech synthesis. So there's all these different voices that you can use and you can hear. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. You can hear what they sound like. Not what we have, but what we enjoy constitutes our abundance. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Pretty good. So um, we would pick our voice. Um, so we'll, we're gonna stick with Adam. Um, there are some voice customizations that we're not going to mess with today. Um, you know, you have a, a langu the language, but right now we're just going to paste this in here, okay? So for the purposes of this, this is simply a demo. So I'm going to be, we're just doing a quick demonstration of how this works. But now all you've got to do is click generate. And so now it's going to be generating the voice. The happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. These were the words of the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, Marcus Aurelius, highlighting the profound impact our mindset has on our lives. But in today's fast-paced, ever-changing world, it can be challenging to maintain a strong... Pretty good, right? So you would go through, you would put your entire script in here. So for now, um, I just do in the intro for the purposes of our demo, okay? 
And you can come over here and we would click the download link right there. Um, and we would download it. So um, I'm just going to put it, I'll just stick it in my downloads. Okay. So we now have the audio file downloaded to my computer. Pretty cool. So now we're going to have to actually make a face. So remember, I don't want to use my face. I want to use somebody else's face. So we're going to make an AI avatar to actually read our voice script for us. Now, to make this avatar, we're going to use a couple of different tools. So I'm going to first use a tool called Mid Journey. So Mid Journey is an image generation tool. So what we want first is an image of a face that looks pretty cool and intriguing and interesting, okay? So in, in our case, I find that when I try to not be, I don't want to try to pretend that it's a real human reading it because it, I think it's a little bit cheesy. So what I like to do is make it really obvious that we're, we're having like a fictional character reading um, this when I use this technique. So Mid Journey is an awesome tool. You can create really amazing uh, faces and faces people that you can create an image from. And then I'm going to show you how to upload that image and turn it into a talking AI avatar, right? Now, Mid Journey is not free. So Mid Journey starts at about 10 bucks a month, but man, it is so worth it. So um, I could talk about this all day. So there's, I, I, we have a lot of fun with this. So one thing I'm doing, I'm using Mid Journey to create my ad images these days. So we're creating some of our, our best performing ads are created with Mid Journey. Um, I'm using it for some of the images in my webinars. I'm using it all over the place. Um, and in a future session, if there's enough interest, I can talk about how to prompt mid-journey. Um, let me know in the comments if you would be interested in a more deep dive of how to use mid-journey to create awesome AI images. So again, let me know in the comments if that's interested, interesting to you. If there's enough interest in it, I'll do a more advanced session on how to use mid-journey and how to use the, the just the right kind of prompts to get what you want out of it. And Mid Journey again is for images, and, and it creates beautiful images. I'll show you some examples uh, of that. Now, I already worked behind the scenes to create an image, just so you guys all don't have to just watch me do it. It's actually an image. I think it looks pretty cool. It's of a Roman emperor, okay? Now, I already had this picture ready, so we're, I'm going to show the, the picture that I created, but I'm also going to demo and show you how MidJourney works. But first, here, let's share what the picture looks like. So I'm going to get my screen rolling again, and I'll pull it up. Just one second. Let me find the file, and it's right. Ever, Ever wondered what the secret text? to a fulfillment? That's not what I'm looking for. Um... Okay, cool. I think I'll just show this. That'll do the trick. So that's the image there of the Roman emperor, right? So do you see how it's, um, it doesn't look like I'm trying to be a fake person, right? It's pretty obvious that that's animated. It's very stylish looking, you're right? Um, it looks very ancient Roman. So, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to make this guy talk and he's going to become animated. Okay. So that was what I selected for the video. I'm uh, sorry, for the image that I got from mid journey. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use mid journey. So let me just get it going here. One moment. So. This is Mid Journey. So um, it's basically a, a chat bot we talk to here in this chat. So it creates some pretty amazing images. Like, look at that one. That's uh, that we created this with Mid Journey. So we can see a bunch of examples of some pretty amazing images that we've created. That one is pretty cool. That was all created by AI. No human did anything to, with any of these images. So. You can see us playing around with all kinds of things. There's a pretty funny looking one. <laughs> um, so obviously you can see there, these are various robots with lots of money. That's um, some of what we were doing there. Oh, there's Joe Biden eating cheese. <laughs> there's Barack Obama. But like this, these here, these little castles, those, these are all created, again, by the AI. 
Okay, we have robotic people. There's <laughs> Jeff Bezos. That's pretty cool. Bunch of Elon Musk pictures. So these are not photographs or artist renderings. These are created 100% by AI. All right, so enough of playing with that. So this shows you how I, I got that. Um, and it is pretty easy to use Midjourney. Uh, and let's show you here how we do that. So I'm gonna share with you this, the prompt that was used to create the picture for our demo today. Okay, so in Midjourney, you go slash imagine, and then you put your prompt in. Okay, and what we used is ancient Roman emperor facing the camera face only. So I'm going to put that in and you'll see examples of, of, of mid journey at work. Okay. So you can see that it's um, my job has been submitted. It's waiting to start. And there it goes. And it actually takes a little bit of time. You kind of watch it as it's doing its thing and as it's painting the image. And we'll let it finish. So, um, and then it gives you four examples, and then you get to pick which of the four you want to output in full, like full HD. Okay. So these came out fairly similar to what we did before. So uh, I like, I think I like the last one. So um, to get that, all we got to do here, uh, the U, see this U uh, stands for upscale. So we have a choice. We could either upscale image number four, which is this one, or we could ask it to make new variations. So if we don't like this one. We can just come over here and hit that. And it's going to give us four more variations similar to this one. Okay, so it's queued up the job and it's going to um, then try to get um, me four more examples similar to this one. Okay, and then um, once we found the one we wanted, we hit the upscale again, that's the little U here. So you would pick the one you want and you hit the, the U and then it's gonna output the high def, high definition version of that image. So we're gonna see what Mid Journey comes up with. It's still busy painting away here. And uh, come on, complete the job. 62% <laughs> done. And come on, here we go, 78. Isn't it exciting to watch <laughs> watch it do this? Okay, we're almost there, 93%, almost done. Come on, here we go. I like these, I like these. So let's say number four, I like he's got that little amulet on his armor. So um, we just hit U4 and now it's queued it to upscale it and create our high definition version, okay? so. Um, which there we go. There's our high def version. So we could turn this into an AI avatar. So now I already prepared one ahead of time just for speed today. So I'm going to show you um, a different example. Um, but we're going to move on to how you animate your script. All right. Okay, so now we showed you mid-journey. You saw the prompt that we used, and we're on to step four, which is we're going to now take that package. We've got our image, we've got our audio, and we're gonna put it all together, and we're gonna turn it into an animated video. Now, to animate the video in the style we're doing today, we're gonna have this avatar reading our script, and we're gonna use it in the style, uh, uh, it's a little bit of a different style and it's from a tool called DID. And I'll show you DID on the screen. Um, DID I'm using again right now with a lot of success in my ads. I'm using it for social media and other things. And uh, DID is just one of probably seven different tools that you can use to create different styles of video. And again, if you're interested in wanting to learn how to do different styles of video, like we have uh, more humanistic, realistic uh, 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 videos. We have videos that are created from stock images and stock video footage. We have presentation like PowerPoint style videos that can be created. All kinds of different videos can be created with AI. And if there's enough interest, again, vote in the comments, just comment and let me know if you're interested. I can show you other types of videos that you can create 
besides the style we're going to create today. Okay. And don't worry, not only today, the one I'm going to show you is incredibly easy. They're all easy to do once you see how it's done. Okay. So we're going to be using DID. I'm going to open up the tool. I'm going to be sharing it on the screen with you here. And it's a tool that uses AI to take an image and transform it into a human animated avatar that can read anything you could think to give it. Okay. It's really as simple of uh, you just upload your audio file, you upload your picture, and DID just does the rest. So let's do it. I'll show you real quick on screen. And then um, we'll show you our fi the final product of the video that it creates. All right. So, oh, that was our source image that we used for our demo today. And then over here in DID, you have all these different pictures. Um, and you literally just upload, you just say create video, you click the add thing and you upload your video um, and then you upload your audio and it creates it, okay? So um, just for fun today, here, I'm gonna I'll upload the one, you know, why is it not showing me? Huh, weird, it's not showing me my video. So, um, so here's where you upload it. And so you can see here, that was the image that we used for our demo. And uh, and then it will, um, we just then give it its script, which you put the script over here on the right. So you upload your image here, you put your script over here on the right. Um, and then you hit to, uh, uh, to generate video, okay? Um, oh, oh uh, you have options, I forgot to tell you here. You have options. DID actually has its own audio library. So if you want to use one of DID's audios, you can do that as well. Um, or you can upload your audio by clicking here, right? So that's the difference. You can paste your script in and use DID's voices, or you can use your audio here. I like using 11 lab voices for, for this, but uh, here's where you would upload your audio. And, uh, and then you just hit generate file, okay? And let's take a look. I'll show you. This is what it came out to be right here. Ever wondered what the secret to a fulfilling life is? Here's a hint. It's etched in the annals of philosophy, in the words of the great Marcus Aurelius himself. Yes, we're delving into the realm of Stoicism, where the calm of mind and the strength of will converge. But the true gem within Stoicism, it's discipline. And it's not just about schedules and routines. No, it's a deeper trend. Pretty cool, right? So uh, you can upload anything um, that's a human face that the, the, the AI can recognize, and you're uploading a static image. And if it can recognize the face, it can turn it into a fully animated video. And just for, I was just messing around earlier. This is kind of funny. Hey, it's me. I have no idea what I'm doing trapped inside this YouTube thumbnail. I want to get out. <laughs> so that... It took my, I literally just uploaded one of my YouTube thumbnails with my face on it, pasted something silly in and told it to read it. So uh, that's uh Hey, it's me. I have no idea what I'm doing trapped inside this YouTube thumbnail. I want to get out. <laughs> so you can do this with just about anything. So we're obviously using the, the stoic uh, Roman looking uh, thing there to, uh, to generate this. But one thing I want to show you, I'm looking here at my resources. I think that's it for our demo. So we've outputted that. We can now upload our video, whether it's to TikTok, whether it's to Instagram, whether it's a YouTube short or even a YouTube long. I'm using it really successfully for ads right now. And one of the things I think is key with using this style of video with the DID style video is that you don't want to make it look like you're trying to pretend that you're real, right? It, it, it's yeah I, I don't try to like upload a picture of yourself and then try to pretend that it's a real picture what you want to do is make it tongue-in-cheek right if you do want to upload a picture of yourself make it funny make it like where it's referencing itself where it's really obvious that it's an ai right like make it kind of humorous make it kind of unique or stylize it make it look like you're a cyborg right or make it look like um your character is out of a science fiction novel or fantasy novel you can do this in style of watercolor paintings, oil paintings, any kind of art style that you can imagine. You could make a surrealistic painting like from Salvador Dali with a face and it will animate it, right? You can do all that kind of stuff. 
So make it obvious that you're using AI. Make it obvious that you're doing something cool and unique. Give it a little bit of style. Make it funny, right? Like the YouTube thumbnail of putting myself in there. It's very obvious that I, I did that because I, you know, I'm messing around with AI. You see the difference? If you're trying to make it where you take yourself too seriously and you try to upload an image of yourself and try to pass it off to pretend that it's AI, yeah, I don't, I don't like that myself, and I, and I don't think you're going to get good results at that. But when you take advantage of it being unique and interesting and different, and you don't, you're not hiding the fact that it's AI, it works just fine. So next up, let's take a look. I'll show you some live ads that I'm literally running now um, with my own ad accounts. Um, and um, yeah, so if you're using this to create social media accounts, so you can upload this to your shorts in YouTube or wherever you might put it, and you can use it to build an audience and get a lot of views on your channel. And of course on YouTube, Monetization is easy. Once you have enough views and enough subscribers, you turn on their um, ad program. And these kinds of videos can absolutely be monetized, okay? And it's possible to monetize these on YouTube as long as you're providing real value, okay? You don't wanna make spammy garbage. You wanna make actual good, useful, interesting, funny content. And if you do that, there's no reason you can't use these AI techniques and these AI videos and audio to actually monetize a YouTube channel and make quite a lot of money doing so. So essentially, as long as you're following the guidelines that Google and YouTube and whatever whatever platform you're on um, are specifying, and you're providing value and you're entertaining and you're interesting, you're fine. You're gonna be approved to be monetized on YouTube and you can use these anywhere, okay? Now again, not only monetizing a video uh, channel, but you can use this to sell other kinds of products. Like let's say you wanna use a channel to promote your newsletter. Forget monetization for a minute. Let's say you've got a newsletter you're trying to build subscribers to. Well, you can create videos like these and then at the end, just have your character do a call to action to go join your newsletter, right? You don't have to monetize it with ads. You can monetize it by selling your own stuff or sending people to go subscribe to your newsletter. In fact, you could actually have an entire persona like we could turn that Roman emperor into a persona that has his own newsletter. The newsletter could be voiced by this fake artificial persona, just like the YouTube channel is, right? So they could be receiving emails from this long dead Roman emperor that could be like, you know, you do a whole thing about how he's been resurrected and wants to pass on stoicism, okay? So you can use this to promote your own stuff, lead magnets, subscribers, selling products, or, I've talked earlier about a technique of using Beehive, a Beehive newsletter to monetize, that um, you can actually use this to make money building your own newsletter. Look in the channel for that video. But um, there are people using this stuff in a, a lot of different ways, okay? So what I'd like to do now, let's, now we're done talking about how to use this for building a channel and getting subscribers and social media uh, views. And let's show you how I'm using it in ads, all right? So I'm gonna share my screen once again, and um, I'll show a couple of the ads. And this, uh, these ads were created by Daniel on my team. And um, there is the first one, okay? So you can see this here. Uh, this is the ad, and it is doing, this ad um, uh, has been running for, uh, I think about a week now. It's doing pretty darn good. And uh, in fact, this ad was created with a free DID account. You can even still see the watermark down in the bottom. See that? So it's watermarked by DID and it's still doing fantastically. So here, let's take a look. Oh, why is the, oh, it's muted. Artificial intelligence can now build you entire online businesses with a few clicks of what I'm told is called a mouse. Anyway, I could have only dreamed of AI that made me all the money I needed to fuel my experiments. You recognize who that is? Who here knows who that is? So in the live audience with us here today, or if you're watching this later, guess. I'll give you a quick five seconds. Guess who is this person right here? Who is the, the persona that we are using in this video? Do you recognize it? Yeah, give you a moment. Type it in. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, this is Tesla. So this is Nikola Tesla. And uh, yeah, and so what uh, Tesla is obviously famous for inventing, well, uh, controversially inventing radio, right? So radio and the uh, AC current that we use for powering our whole, uh, powering the entire world, all and many, many modern electronic concepts were invented by Tesla. And so I'm kind of taking advantage of that, promoting uh, that, you know, uh, AI, right? What would Tesla do with AI if he had uh, his hands on that? So that uh, that's this one. And then, of course, another famous inventor. Anybody recognize that one? So uh, let's let's give this one a play. Let me unmute it. As one of the most famous inventors in history, I know a revolutionary invention when I see one. New artificial intelligence can now build brand new profitable businesses for you with the click of a few buttons. No lightning storms required. If you've been searching. <laughs> so those are two examples of ads we're running right now. And I'm using AI for image ads, AI for video ads. I'm using them all over and they're incredibly effective. Can you guess which one is our number one ad right now? So out of all the ads and all the spending we're doing right now, one of the ones I just showed you is our number one ad. And it is just crushing everything that came before it. It is incredible the amount of clicks it's getting. And one of the things that you'll notice about those ads, right? I didn't try to pretend that it was me reading an AI script. I'm doing something a little bit fun, a little bit tongue in cheek. I'm showing old inventors from long days long gone by, right? And talking about what they would think of AI in today's world. You see how that's kind of a creative spin? And so when you do it this way, it's kind of cool, it's kind of interesting, and people pay attention and click on the videos. And you don't want to get too serious with this, and you don't want to, it comes out a little bit cheesy, a little bit not, you know, I don't know, I don't I don't seem to, I don't think that you're going to get good results doing that. I think you need to make it kind of character-based, kind of funny, kind of interesting, obvious that you're using AI, and then it can work really, really well. And uh, yeah, okay, a few of you in the chat got it. It's Tesla. Tesla is our our number one ad, definitely beating out um, Ben Franklin, unfortunately. I like Ben Franklin. Uh, I don't know which one I like best, but um, both of them invented things that completely changed our entire world for different reasons. So um, there we go. Um, that is how you can use AI to create scripts, to create audio, to create an amazing image, which then you transform into a talking animated video that you can use in social media and for ads. And uh, it's amazing to me that there are not more people. In fact, I probably shouldn't be talking about this because I like being one of the few people using this in ads. I haven't been seeing this much myself at the time of recording this video of this in use in ads. And it really surprises me that there aren't more people doing this. So maybe you can fix that. Um, all right, so that is our topic for animated AI videos. And uh, so that concludes that. Now, one of the things I wanna remind you that um, uh, I uh, have done previous training on Code Interpreter. I'll link to that video when, when we post this. Um, uh, also, if you wanna learn more about how to use Code Interpreter in ChatGPT, um, to do that stuff. So it's that chat bot that you can talk to, but you now you can upload images, or sorry, upload all kinds of files and get ChatGPT to interact and run basically like an own, its own program, like uh, uh, and analyze and evaluate files that you upload. Um, and it does a lot more than that. But if you want to see that, we'll post that the link to that down below. Um, and then of course, let me know if you're interested in more training on mid journey, that is one that, um, that we can go deeper into on how to use mid journey. If you're interested in that, uh, and on that, that is the, um, that's all we're covering today on this topic. And I can get more into using AI for ads. It's another topic that we could cover if there's enough interest in it, just let me know. Um, and so what I'll do real quick is I think with our live audience, we probably have some questions. So Nick, I'm gonna ask you to come on um, here real quick and um, and let me know, do we have any on topic questions? So specifically about this training, anybody have any questions that I can help you with 
uh, on, on how to do this. So if there's a part of this that's unclear, part of this that you want to ask an additional question on, let's get on topic questions done real quick. And then the next segment I'm going to do is we're going to talk about how to, how to hide, how to cloak your AI content so that Google and anyone else will have no idea that it is AI content. So I'm actually going to do it live. So I'm crossing, double crossing fingers here, hoping that my technique will work live while you guys watch. Um, it's been working for weeks, so I hope it works today. We're going to do that next. Um, but first, we'll do questions. So Nick, can you come on, Mike? Hey, can you hear me? Yep, there you are. Okay, so uh, I don't have a specific question, but there's some feedback. Mm -hmm. um, some of the feedback was that when you were working on Bid Journey, getting that picture of the emperor, uh, people were saying they they seemed interested in doing more, doing a deeper dive on Bid Journey in the future. So cool. Okay, yeah, we can yeah. do that. So, do you want to put that on our uh, our list of uh, topics? Yeah, I'll do that. Awesome. Awesome. And then we had some new uh, we had some new questions roll in just now. Okay. Yeah. Let's take them up. So um, someone asked, is there any copy – oh, I see. Is there a copyright on pictures of famous people like Tesla? Uh, not long dead ones like Tesla for sure. Like, you know, uh, Ben Franklin, Tesla, um, and, and it, yeah, there, there's no issue there. Now, arguably, uh, um, you know, you might want to be careful with modern celebrities. You know, I don't know that I would, you know, like – create a picture of the rock and use it in one of my ads. I definitely wouldn't do that. Uh, but historic figures. And you can also do like, you could do um, like, let's say, instead of saying you want to do a video with the rock, you know, uh, Dwayne Johnson, uh, <laughs> you know, in fast and furious driving a car or something, instead of doing that, you could have it do a more generic action star, right? I mean, mid journey would create some amazing stuff. If you told it to like make a, a you know a, a, an 80s or 90s style action star, it would be really obvious what you were doing without having to use you know like Tom Cruise or Sylvester Stallone or you know. Um, so you can still do concepts like that, but I would advise. Again, I'm not an attorney either, so I cannot tell you with a legal advice on this. I'm just telling you generally based on my understanding. Okay, so all my advice is for entertainment purposes only okay i'm not an attorney but yeah i i personally wouldn't use it on modern living celebrities but old people like tesla no problem what else we got we had a question for someone wanting to know so how many total tools what are the total tools we're using for the strategy because we're, you know we're hopping from one tool to another so today we used um three tools well let's see we've got chat gpt which we use to get our script right we then used 11 labs to get our voice well we got four of them we got mid journey to get our image and then we use did to put it all together so four tools i guess we'll do it that way that's better <laughs> four tools um to generate this now you could DID has built-in voices. So if you wanted to skip the 11 lab step, you could. You could just go straight to mid to uh, DID and use it for voices if you wanted to leave one out. So you got four um, or optionally three if you want DID's voices, okay? And a last okay. call for on-topic questions, and then we're going to move on to the next segment. We do have uh, – we had another one roll in. This was from Sammy. Sammy mm -hmm. says – I'll just read it verbatim. Okay. Um, would ads in general be better made with an animated AI figure or a real person? And then like in parentheses, if more specific, ads in the privacy screen niche. And then Sammy followed up in another message and they say, by better, I mean higher CTRs. Um, as far as like for ads and what's one's going to work better, you could test it. Like if you're really curious – the only real honest answer I could give you would be to test it, right? My opinion would be something that is obviously kind of tongue in cheek um, generated by AI. Um, you know, like, I, I don't know, you might get do a play on matrix characters, right? Don't use Keanu Reeves, but you could tell mid journey to create a, a matrix like persona with sunglasses, right? Maybe who's uh, out there in the internet looking to hack your data. You could also have it do, 
realistic looking kind of tongue in cheek hackers would be another possible just some ideas for you for the security niche um that uh you know that might be another way to look at it you know uh, a really kind of like a scummy uh, bad dude bad looking hacker guy you know you could use all kinds of stereotypes whether you want to go for like a russian hacker or you want to go for like a a young kid in his mom's basement hacker or you know do a stereotype like that i think those would work really well all right any other questions before we move on uh someone wanted to know what subscription plans you were using so i'm assuming like what the price for each of these tools is and the free trials and stuff like that yeah the only one that you would absolutely have to pay for would be I mean, if you're really trying to go budget, you do, you would need a mid journey subscription. I, I don't think, although mid journey has a free trial too, right? They do. But the problem with the trial is there's like a uh, queuing system and it's almost, and if there's no one using it at the time, they'll allow some space for free trial users, but it's almost always being okay. occupied okay. by the paid users. So what's the cheapest mid journey plan? What is it? $10? I forget what the, I think is. it is. Okay. So, so yeah, mid journey, you would need to spend 10 bucks a month. Um, you could probably get away if you wanted, you know, if you didn't want to upload a successful YouTube video and you wanted to just use chat GPT, you could, you could probably even use the free version of chat GPT. Um, you know, it's probably not going to get you the best thing. So chat GPT, if you want to pay for the premium version, that's 20 bucks, 10 bucks for mid journey. Um, you could skip 11 labs and just use DID for voice. Um, now you saw my ads, like ads that are literally spending thousands of dollars on, you know, we're spending uh, uh, daily, spending a lot of money on, on those ads. And I used, well, actually my team member, Daniel on my team used a free version of DID for that, which I don't advise, but uh, and DID has a variety of plans too. So, um, I kind of answered your question, I hope. Hopefully that gets gets you the info you're looking for. All right. All right, so are we good to move on to the next? Do we have any other on-topic questions we got to cover? Because we did last call, so last call, no more questions. <laughs> There's one more question if you wanted to address it quickly. Okay, let's do it. So are these tools effective in emails? Well, they wouldn't, so yes, for different reasons, right? You can use chat GPT all day long to write your emails. That's really good at that. Um, you could use mid journey to create images that you could stick into those emails, uh, but you can't put, there's no effective way to be able to really embed videos into your emails. So, you know, I wouldn't use DID. I wouldn't use 11 labs. I would use uh, chat GPT for email writing. Um, and then if you want to put images into your email, you could use mid journey to make some simple images for, for that. All right. So are you all ready to learn how to hide your AI content? If you're ready, we're going to be moving on to the next segment. Now, let me get my stuff ready here. Okay, got that there. Wait. There it is. Okay. Well, let's do this. Just rearranging some windows. And there we go. Okay. So we're going to start our second segment. And did my camera end up getting crooked? That's kind of weird. Okay, don't know if that fixed it at all, but there we go. Okay, so we're going to move on and we're going to do the next segment and uh, we're going to get started here. So remember, I'm recording these with a teleprompter. So you might hear me do show notes. I might restart things like that. But, um, uh, but, but there we go. All right. <clears throat> There's a lot of controversy about using AI to generate content. And there are people that are really freaked out. They're literally terrified that Google is going to see that they're using AI to create blog posts, 
or pages or other kinds of content on their websites. And they're worried that they're going to get one of those big old Google slaps and get a penalty, right? And lose their search engine rankings. And so Google has put out advice saying, hey, we're fine with AI. You can use AI as long as you're providing value and you're following all of our guidelines, AI is fine. But the other thing people are afraid of is that Google's going to change their mind where maybe AI is okay today, but tomorrow are they gonna decide it's not? So they're worried about this and they want to learn how to hide the fact that their content was created by AI. So I'm gonna show you a technique that I've been using now. It's been working really, really well to take the content I create with ChatGPT, and then I use another tool called Claude to turn it into something that is undetectable by AI. And so we're gonna do a live demo. So while we're recording this with a live audience, I'm gonna be writing an article I'm gonna go show that it is detected as AI, and then I'm going to try to make it undetectable. We'll see if I can get it. Yeah, sometimes I can get them to where they're 90% undetectable, sometimes they're 100% undetectable, but that's sort of the range that, I, that I've gotten it into, um, and often 100%. So we'll see, let's see if these tools can give us a 100% undetectable rating, uh, and we'll do that right now. First up, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna to go to originality.ai. Originality.ai is recognized as the leading provider of AI detection tools. Um, it's being used in schools to detect you know, plagiarism from the students. It's being used um, in a lot of different companies. And uh, so we're gonna use originality.ai to run our tests today, okay? So um, first up, what we're gonna do is we're going to write a blog post. So we're gonna, to, we're gonna do this live. So I'm in front of a live audience right now. So amongst all of you out there in the live audience, do me a favor and give me some suggestions. What would you like a blog post about? Give me anything. So instead of, I'm gonna show you that it's not, I'm not making it up. I'm gonna go to the live audience. You give me a topic. Give me a topic on in any niche market, on any subject. And uh, I'm gonna write a blog post about that right now. And then we're gonna see if it's detectable as AI. And then we're going to scrub it, cloak it, magically make it humanized um, all at the same time. So uh, let's do that with the live audience. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna let you know there is a very special prompt. It's kind of long. It's In fact, it's very long that I'm gonna be using to do this and that prompt will be shared with all of our Push Button AI members. So if you're a Push Button AI member, I will share my prompt with you so you can use that. Also, channel members, if you're a, a channel member here, you will also get our prompts. We'll put uh, we'll be releasing that in both places um, to, So for our technique today. Now, I see, okay, we got some ideas coming in. So we're going to go back to the screen and we're going to start the process now. All right, so let's go over to ChatGPT. We're gonna to go to GTP4. We're just gonna to go to the regular GTP4 default. And we are going to do, um, let's see here. Wow, a lot of good ones. Um, let's see here. So reverse mortgages. I like that one. Blake suggested that. Let's go with reverse mortgages. So we're gonna start out and we're gonna say, please write me an outline for a block, a extremely helpful blog article about reverse mortgages, okay? So first we're gonna ask for an outline. And we're going to say here, I'm going to start here. I'll say, you are an expert SEO writer. And a content creator in the mortgage niche market. Please write me an outline. Okay. 
There we go. So it's writing an outline. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a piece of content around this. Okay, and I'm going to say, please use this outline to create an article as long as possible in length. Be, compre ah, be comprehensive and don't leave anything out from your outline. Okay, and now it's going to write it. So we're going to let it write its content, and uh, it may it may stop partway through because I asked it for a very long article, and if it stops, we'll have to tell it to continue. But uh, we're going to let it write that article, and so what I'm going to do is I will take that content and we're going to run it through AI detection and see what score it gets, and then we're going to try to make it magically human. Okay. <laughs> So I see it's still writing. It's actually doing a pretty good job of that article. Um, and uh, um, yeah, still going. So um, once it's done, we'll do that. And what I'm doing here in the prompt that I'm about to use, I'm going to explain a little bit of backstory about how this works while we let ChatGPT do its writing. Um, oh, it finished. Okay. So, but what we're doing here, is there are a lot of characteristics of human writing that are not native. This sounds kind of strange, but it's not native to the way AI creates content, at least as of today. Okay, so it is um, uh, when AI creates content, it follows kind of a, a really. It's kind of too perfect, I suppose, and it's too average. It's basically like the average of everyone's writing that it's ever read. So it's read you know, billions, maybe trillions of pages of content. And it averages out the average writing style from all of those different ways. And it tries to be maybe a little bit too good and a little bit too average. So it can be detected. And so what we want to do is we want to humanize that content. And human content has some very specific characteristics that we can tell, we can take the, the content created from one AI take that content, feed it to a second AI, and then tell the second AI, here's a bunch of human characteristics, rewrite the content and make it human. That's essentially what I've been doing. And I'll show you, we'll do this, what we're going to do with this live demo. So let's get into it. So here's our article. So we're just going to, we're just going to highlight the whole thing. There we go. So let's highlight the entire thing. We're going to copy it and then let's go over to originality AI and we're going to detect AI content. Um, and then we're going to just paste our stuff right in there. Okay. And then let's call this um, reverse mortgage test. Okay. And we're going to hit scan now. Okay. So it's doing its thing. It's scanning. We can see here we have 558 words of content. And one of the things that does happen when I humanize it is the content tends to get a little bit shorter. So uh, do keep that in mind. So, um, you know, you might, uh, if you were writing a, a, an article that you might want to post on your site, you might use an article that's a bit longer than this, than 558 words. Hey, look at that. 100% AI. So it says that this is 0% human. Hey, props for um, originality.ai. They detected it, which I expected them to. They've gotten pretty good at detecting uh, content from ChatGPT, okay? So now you know that if they can detect it, Google can detect it, right? So here is what we are going to do. So we're gonna take that content. I'm gonna open up, let me just open up Notepad here real quick. And uh, we're going to paste our article in here just to keep, just to save it. Okay. So that's our original article. Um, and we're going to save that off to the side. And so now what we'll do is we're going to come over here and we're going to go to 
Claude. So that's it, Claude.ai. It is in beta um, at the time of this broadcast. It's not available around the whole world. Um, I, I think at this point, it's only in the US. I think soon to be in other um, uh, countries, but um, you want to sign up and get access to the uh, beta of Claude. Okay, It's just Claude, as you see there, dot AI. So now what we are going to do is we're going to come over to Claude and um, we are going to use a very special prompt. Again, this prompt I'm going to share with you, uh, those who are channel members, those who are members of Push Button AI, um, you will all get this prompt. And um, so here is what it looks like. Now, it took me a long time to um, come up with this. So it's very lengthy. So we're going to paste the whole thing in there. Now, paste it as text. But let me show you an example of what it looks like. Um, so we can do another notepad. That's the prompt, OK? So we're telling Claude to rewrite the below content using all of the below concepts in your writing. Um, and we're telling it there, there's uh, several sets of instructions. This is quite a lengthy prompt. But basically, we have identified all of the characteristics of human writing. Um, we were telling it to. Um, Vary things. We're telling it, yeah, we're telling it to be more human. And again, we're talking about, you know, the the grammar that it might use. An AI does not use grammar like a human does. Um, it does not use writing style of things. Um, it, it doesn't do things like foreshadowing, like giving a hint of something to come. It doesn't use symbolism. It doesn't use irony. It doesn't give metaphors. It doesn't hype things up and exaggerate them. Um, Anyway, there are all these things that are um, characteristics of human uh, um, writing. Okay? Use vivid sensory details in your imagery. So AI doesn't tend to do that. Um, and so we go through all this, you know, talk about using cultural references, um, using um, kind of slang terms, things like that. Um, grammar syntax anyway there's a lot a lot of stuff in here so this is a very gigantic prompt i will share it with all channel members and all push button ai customers but we've um we've put that prompt in there um and oh one thing i need to do let me just i'm going to do one last thing is i'm going to paste my article in there um one second Okay, I've got that. We have one gigantic prompt, and we're going to submit it. Here it goes. Now, I noticed today um, Claude is doing something a little different than uh, last week. When I pasted this prompt in before, I could see it in the little text box here. I could see the entire thing. But what it did is it transformed it into a, uh, a little text file. So um, I'm not sure what's gonna how this is gonna come out today. This it's doing something a little bit different than when I just I last tested this. So we've copied that, and now let's go back to originality.ai, and we're gonna do test two. We're gonna get rid of all this content, and we're gonna paste in our new content. You can see it's much shorter. See how it got smaller? So keep that in mind when you're doing this. And then we're gonna scan again. Fingers crossed, drum roll please. Let's see if I'm gonna have egg on my face or whether it's going to pass the human test. Let's find out. Uh, come on, give us our score. Okay, it's taking a little longer for some reason. There we go. Look at that. 100% <laughs> human. <laughs> Pretty cool, right?
I was a little worried there for a minute because yeah, it, the Claude was behaving a little differently than it did for me. Like it has been for me normally, but as you just saw, we took a piece of content that was 100% written by AI. We followed that simple procedure and then we put it into originality.ai and boom, it's human, okay? So uh, there you go. That is how you do this. Now, if you're a member, if you're a customer of Push Button AI, I will share that exact prompt. It is very large. It's very difficult to describe the whole thing in detail. But just to, so for those of you who are not channel members and not a customer of Push Button AI, really we spent a lot of time doing a lot of research. I've looked at a bunch of other prompts that other people are, have used that um, are, you know, that maybe there are diff previous things that people have done that are not as effective today. Um, I analyzed those and just made a big list of all the characteristics of human content. And now check this out. What I did is I went and made a big list of the characteristics of human created content. I then fed that to ChatGPT and I asked ChatGPT, what are other examples of um, human content? And then ChatGPT gave me a bunch more. Right, so I put that together in a big old massive list of descriptions of what human content looks like and how it's different than AI content. And then that's what I based my prompt on. So I then go to Claude and tell Claude to write content following all of those guidelines. And that's what worked here. And that's how we have bypassed and tricked the AI detectors, okay? Now, one thing I wanna give you a warning, don't do this so that you can like plagiarize stuff. If you're a student, please don't do this to get a pass and get a paper submitted. Um, that's not the intention here. We're not trying to fool anybody. We're not trying to, you know, get away with something unethical. Um, and I definitely don't condone that or suggest that you do that. Instead, this is for people that are maybe just a little bit worried that they might get slapped from Google for using AI content in their blog. That's it. Uh, that's really what the purpose of using this is for. And in fact, if you're using AI content in other places, you don't need to do this, right? If you're using it like for writing emails, you don't got to worry about this. You don't need to use an AI, you know, you don't have to scrub your AI content. If you're using AI content to create like private members area content, like courses or eBooks or things like that, you don't need this. It's totally unnecessary. But for those who want to use it for public facing content that you want to rank in the search engines, that's specifically where this technique comes in handy. So um, I didn't get a chance to watch the chat. Nick, um, were they rooting for me? Did they think I was going to succeed? Or were they, they, they thinking I was going to have a, a, a little egg on my face there? I think they were on the edge of their seat. So it was pretty, uh, maybe a little silent right right during that time so i think they were like what's gonna happen yeah yeah so what i haven't showed you this before what do you think of this uh that's interesting i'm already thinking of applications so really cool all right so then uh, let's do a quick round of on topic comments questions feedback whatever anybody wants to share let's keep it on topic of ai detection and evading ai detection um and we'll cover uh, your on-topic questions, and then we're going to move on to the next segment. So what do we got? So Caesar says, and I'm curious about this too. Mm -hmm. uh, can you read a few sentences from that human, quote unquote, human content? I want to see how it flows. Sure. Let's take a look. Okay, I'll, I'm going to inform them.
Am I back? You're back. Okay. Uh, okay, I guess I'm going to have to take my darn computer in. Uh, okay, so sorry about that. But um, here we go. Uh, yeah, so I am definitely going to have to take my computer in. Got this like billion dollar computer and it just loves to crash for some reason. Um, one second while I get all my pages going. And where's my PowerPoint presentation? Stand by. Ah, no. Okay, there's that. Okay. Whew. Sorry about that, everyone. I've um, got a very important segment coming up, too, that I was all prepared for. Uh, lots of windows. I've got a spreadsheet to give you guys. Uh, and, uh, okay, well, now we're back. So there was a question I was attempting to answer um, when uh, things went haywire. Ready for me to fill you in again, or uh, still need a second? Yeah, I don't know how my camera moved at the same time, but okay. Um, so let's go to our test results, and I'll uh, I'll read that content. That's what we were getting to. So here, let's share the screen. And um, oh, oops, it took the first line. So reverse mortgages seem complicated at first glance, but they can actually be a real lifeline for older homeowners looking to tap into their home equity. I should know when my parents consider getting a, this is amazing because this is actually true. <laughs> it wrote this and I'm, and it's true. I'll admit I was skeptical, but after doing some research, I, I realized reverse mortgages aren't some shady financial product. Like I assumed they can be legit and helpful if done right. Let me break it down for you in simple terms. And, and so truly really, it's good. So this is a, uh, you know, the content reads well, it's good content. So the, the only downside that I have found in the testing that I've been doing is that occasionally it's, you know, well, not occasionally, it shortens the content. It shortens it every time. And so, you know, you may want to prepare your content in blocks. You can take, you know, take a, maybe an article from in three pieces and sort of assemble it together. Um, or you want to start out with very lengthy content to begin with. This process does shorten the content. That is for sure. All right. And so did we have any other questions on this topic before um, we move on? And I, I have uh, I, I quite a bit of content to cover still. So. Um. Yeah, there's one more. Um, so Troy says, because uh, you were using Claude mm -hmm. to do this. He mm -hmm. says, would ChatGPT be able to also follow these guidelines? You know, I haven't tried it in reverse. Um I did not have luck doing chat GPT back to chat GPT uh, where I had luck is by switching from one model to the other. Um, so um, what I just showed you is the, the, the best results I got was by doing it this way. So you'd have to play around with it and you know, you could get your own originality.ai account and test it and see what other results you might get. But um, I would suspect that maybe, creating the content in Claude and then cleaning it in chat GPT, doing it in reverse would probably work, but uh, um, yeah. All right. So are we uh, good to go to the next segment? Yeah, let's move on. Okay, cool. I'm going to try to adjust my camera ever so slightly since somehow the computer crashing also messed up the camera, which makes zero sense. 
and now it's crooked. Sorry, everyone. Is it still crooked? It is, huh? Nick, can you tell on the... Uh, a little bit, yeah. Okay. It's, it's kind of negligible, though. Well, this is being recorded for posterior's sake. Did I make it worse? Come on. All right. I guess I'm going to call. Is that good enough? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bizarre how the camera changed. Uh, I don't know. Oh, and now, of course, that in the screen. This is very annoying. Okay. All right, so we're going to get started. I have another piece of content. So for those of you who are hung out, I know we lost a couple people there in the uh, in the crash, but um, I uh, have some really good content, and this is part of our commission chain reaction training that I'm going to be doing. So for those of you who are push button AI customers, um, you're going to get this training in your members area. Plus, you're going to be getting. Um, I have a spreadsheet I'm going to share with you that you'll see on the screen. I'll share that with all of the push button AI members. Um, there's a list of niche markets that I'm going to share with you um, and, and a lot more. So this will all be archived and put in your members area for push button AI. And the training I'm about to give is a little lengthy. We've been on a long time today, but I'm going to I have a little, it's a little bit of a lengthy uh, piece I'm going to do right now with a lot of content about how to get free traffic and then turn that into affiliate commissions using courses, basically. So those of you who have a push button AI account are all set to profit from this because um, you can make courses at the push of a button. So uh, really this is this training is designed for um, uh, either, for, mostly for, for you, for the push button AI customers, because you can build an entire course business at the press of a button um, and that enables you to quickly implement the training I'm about to give you, okay? So uh, it's, it is a prerequisite that you will need to either have or create a course in order to implement this training, but it, it quite literally sets off a chain reaction of commissions and free traffic, and it is powerful stuff. So uh, that's, that's what we're covering next. And this is the first in a series of trainings so this will be going on for, for probably about the next four to six weeks. I will do a segment a week um, going through the uh, commission chain reaction training. And so today is going to be our first segment for that. Um, and I want to get set up here. Let's move that over here. And I have a... I'm going to do a little recap of what commission chain reaction is. Some of you may have seen this, um, but uh, yeah, so here we go. And actually slideshow from beginning. There we go. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Oh, I forgot I lost my show notes. Okay. This is the first in a series of training on what I call the commission chain reaction. And with commission chain reaction, you actually create a business that gets free traffic. Just the whole business model in and of itself generates free traffic to your website, which then results in a chain reaction of commission. 
And not only that, you get to build an email subscriber list almost on autopilot when you do this right. So I'm gonna be going through our series of trainings over how to implement the commission chain reaction. Now this training is specifically designed for those who are customers and members of pushbutton.ai. If you're not yet a customer and you, or you don't know what pushbutton AI is, boy, are you missing out. Because what it does is it allows you to build an entire business. AI creates your business, writes your sales pages, writes your emails, creates video training, creates audio training, sets up a course, sets up your shopping cart, puts all your customer service stuff in place, and sets up a learning management system. It, it just goes on and on and on. It finds your domain name. It installs your hosting, sets up your website, and launches the entire thing. Something that literally takes weeks and weeks and weeks. It does it in one afternoon, all powered by AI. And uh, yes, so if you're interested in using push button AI, what you'll want to do is go and register for our free web class. If you want like a tool that does all of that for you and can launch your business like that, then go to pushbutton.ai slash free class. That's pushbutton.ai slash free class. Register for one of our master class trainings where we'll be in there live helping you out, answering all your questions, and we'll show you what this tool is, why it's so powerful. And right now it's closed to the public. We're only accepting a small number of beta testers and you can find out if you qualify, but you need to attend the first, the free class first. And again, that's at pushbutton.ai slash free class. Now with that out of the way, let's get into it. So we're gonna talk about the commission chain reaction business model. I'll explain how it works and you will need a course. You'll need to have a course for sale on your own website in order to make this work. So if you're a customer of Push Button AI, you can do that and just have AI do it all. AI can literally build the whole thing for you if you're a customer. And then if not, you will need a course in order to make this work. And I'm gonna show in our series of trainings, um, this is part one of the training, and I'm gonna show you how this business model works. I'll show you how you pick your niche market and how you identify a commission chain reaction. and then in our next lesson, we're gonna start talking about how you get traffic, how you get the site going and how you make money with it into future sessions. So let's get to it. I have a presentation I'm gonna be sharing with you. Let me get my screen up and then let me get my presentation launched. Cool, so I love this quote. Um, you know, I love some of what Bruce Lee talks about with success and living. Um, and I like this quote, there are no limits, there are only plateaus. So you must not stay there, you must go beyond them. So wherever you are in your business or in your life as an entrepreneur, don't stay where you are. Don't just keep doing the same old thing over and over and over because you'll never move on to the next plateau. You're gonna have to try something different. And I believe the commission chain reaction is the perfect thing to try. If you're stagnated and you're stuck and you're feeling like you're not sure what to do in building your online business, or if you've already got a business and you're kind of feeling stuck and you're not sure the best way to take advantage of the internet to build your business, keep watching because this is great content for both scenarios. So this was a previously confidential strategy that I couldn't share in the past, but I'm now sharing it with you now. And the technique I'll be showing you generates traffic and it sets off one of these commission chain reactions and it does it with free traffic. Now, this method generates the traffic and it sets off this chain reaction. And again, you don't have to buy traffic. There's no paid Facebook ads or paid ads that you need at all in order to make this work. You set the business model up following my training that I'll be covering in these sessions. Um, and the traffic, you just follow the procedure that I'm going to give you, and the traffic comes without having to pay for ads. It's very cool. So on this presentation, I have several things that I'm going to show you, which is um, I'm going to show you how we're using AI right now and using this technique. I'll show you the strategy of how to get it going, the simple plan, and then... Um, uh, and then if you want a live demo, you can attend one of our free master classes. I won't be doing a live demo on this presentation, uh, but I do want to let you know that action, 
is the foundational key to all success, as Pablo Picasso says. So don't just watch this training. And, you know, there's so many people that just, it's almost like they have a, a, a full-time job of just consuming content, right? They watch an interesting video and you think about it and you think, oh, that's cool. I should do that. And then you don't do anything and, or maybe you do a little bit and then you move on to the next cool thing and then the next and then the next. And that is not the path to success. The path to success lies in action. So please take what I'm about to share with you today and put it into action. Don't just watch it. You know, sure, I would love your subscription over on YouTube. I'd love the thumbs up on the video. I would love the engagement. All of that is great. But most important to me is that you actually take action on this training. Now, you follow the instructions that I'm going to be sharing with you. I'm going to provide what you need to do. I'll show you how to do it, where to go, what to do. And if you do, I promise you that you will get traffic. You will get traffic for no out-of-pocket costs, and you will make affiliate commissions, and you can set off what I call a commission chain reaction. Now, the other thing is you can use this strategy that I'm about to share with you and add it to an existing business. So if you've already got a business that you would like a new and different way of getting traffic, a new and different way of attracting revenue to your business, this can work for you too. So this is if you're in either of these situations, whether you have an existing business or you just want to start a business, maybe you want to start a brand new business from scratch, stick around, pay close attention. I'm going to be showing you exactly how to use it in both scenarios. Which, by the way, in the chat, let me know whether it's in the comment section or um, in the chat. Let me know uh, which one of these are you. Are you an existing business owner or do you not yet have an online business? Let me know. Pop it into the comments. And I, I really love to see where the audience who watches this video, um, where you're at in this uh, in this scenario. Cool. So let's uh, let's move on, which, by the way, this used to be confidential information that I was not allowed to share, but uh, now today I can. Things have changed, and I'm now allowed to share it with you. So let's keep going. So here's what we're going to do is um, ah. we're going to be starting out by we're going to be looking for high-ticket niche markets. Okay. We want niche markets where people are spending money. We don't want to go into niche markets where people are looking for free stuff or cheap stuff. We want markets where people are willing to spend good amounts of money. Okay, This is where if you promote a product and you sell it, you're going to be able to make at least $50 in commission. Or if you're sending leads, $10 a lead. Okay, And if you're not familiar with affiliate marketing and how that works is basically you just get a link and you promote it, you promote a product or a service, and then you get paid a commission. And so we want things where we get paid lots of commission, high commissions, $50 for sending a customer who pays for something, or at least $10 to send somebody who becomes a lead, you know, fills out a form or joins a list or something like that, okay? Um, cool, now the next step, which um, used to be very challenging, and I'm gonna talk to, to you about um, how this is solved, very easily, okay? You need to create a digital course and have it listed for sale on the internet, okay? This is what our product, pushbutton.ai, specializes in. So if you're a customer, if you're part of our program and you have pushbutton.ai, you literally can, at the press of a button, build an entire digital course business, and it just solves this whole step. Now, ordinarily, this step can take months and months to build and write and create, get your shopping cart set up and get what's called a learning management system set up and get it all written, get the videos produced, do all of that can take a lot of time and a lot of money, but we make it possible in a snap at the push of a button. And again, if you are not yet a push button AI um, member, go to pushbutton.ai slash free class to, um, to join one of our master classes and find out if you can qualify to be part of our uh, private launch, our private beta test. Now we're taking advantage of something that has shifted and changed fairly recently um, in society. And there is a massive rush 
where people are are willing to consume content and courses and training on the internet. Now, 10 years ago, it was a little weird for people, the general public to think about buying product, buying like training on the internet. It was a little unusual, a little weird. Uh, a lot of people did it, but a lot of people were still a little freaked out by it. But of course, due to societal changes, that's all different now. Now, everyone is consuming training and information and courses and step-by-steps and how-tos and recipes and all this kind of stuff on the internet. And so we're taking advantage of this trend um, and especially the video course trend. So people, uh, massive, massive increases in the amount of people that are taking online courses. And you can see some of these examples of 300%. 900% growth on, a, on how to draw, like the training on how to draw. So big, massive increases, 431% increases of people who want to play the guitar, who are buying and consuming online video training. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an online video course like this. Um, and you need to do it again. We're going to do it in a niche market that um, I'm going to show you step by step how to pick the niche market. Uh, and then um, um, we're going to just walk through how you do that in just a moment. But we're going to do a quick outline first, and then we're going to get into how you pick your niche market. Okay. Now, once you've created your course, you've got a course for sale on the internet. And if you're a push button AI customer, that is done in a flash. You just push a button, follow our simple instructions, and you can have your course up and online in a day. Then you load that course up with links. Now, these are special links. They're called affiliate links. If you're not familiar with affiliate marketing, again, it's just it's a really simple way to get a link. And when you someone clicks on your link and they buy a product or sign up for something, you get paid a commission. And so we're going to load our course up with affiliate commission earning links. Now, these links, um, you know, like as an example, let's say that um, you have a course about how to train your dog. That's a common example I, I give in a lot of my trainings. Well, all throughout that course, you could be linking to products of uh, uh, that have to do with either dog training or dog health or even toys, um, things around the house that you might need for your pet, um, all kinds of things that you could link to of products of people that would be want, you know, needing to go through that course that they might be wanting to buy. You could also link to dog, actual like dog training companies that might pay you for people to get training in person. Um, and now if you've got your own business, you obviously don't link to um, affiliate links. You link to your own products. Right? So you'll, you'll be doing it a little bit differently. Now we list that course for sale on the internet and we sell it for anywhere between 19 and $49. That seems to be the sweet spot for this technique. You don't want to do it for less. You don't want to do it for more, but just anything in this price range is kind of the sweet spot. We list it for sale. And again, push button AI customers, you already have a shopping cart and everything set up to sell your courses. Um, and it's done for you by the AI. Okay. Great. So now you got your course, you got all of the commissions listed in the course. And now what happens is, is that every time somebody takes your course. So if someone is doing your course and they've signed up and they're reading through the course, and let's say you have a course about how to be a, a barbecue chef, right? You want to have, you have a course on barbecue cooking and you have the best, want to be the best possible chef. Well, all of the stuff that they might need, right? Maybe a new grill, maybe um, ingredients, right? Maybe tools and things like that, that they might need as a barbecue chef that they could be using to cook with. Maybe things that might have to do with smoking food, maybe, um, um, but there's all kinds of the accessories and tools, right? And one of the examples I'm going to talk about in a minute is golf. Like golf is a great example, Mitch. Let's say somebody wants to learn how to play golf. Well, there's a lot of stuff they're going to buy, right? From uh, clubs and bags and all of the gear that goes with it. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff and they spend a lot of money and that those purchases continue over and over and over, over the years, right? So golf is an example of this. So now when someone goes through your how to, how to get started playing golf guide, 
um, they are going to need to buy stuff and it's all loaded up with your affiliate links. So when someone clicks it and they go and buy that expensive golf bag, you get paid a commission, right? So the purpose here is not really to sell lots of training guides. That's great. And you definitely need to do that, but that's not how you make your profit. I'll explain in a minute. It'll all be clear. You make no profit by selling your guide. All of the profit comes from all the people clicking on your affiliate links and buying the stuff, signing up for offers and earning you commission, right? That's why we call it the commission chain reaction because once you start sending course buyers in, the commissions just start rolling and rolling and rolling. So let's continue and I'll explain a little more of how this works. So remember I said, we're not trying to profit by selling our course. In fact, we're going to create our own commission program, our own affiliate program, and we're going to tell the world, hey, if you send me a click and somebody buys my course, I will pay you 100% commissions. So if somebody comes and buys my course for $49, I'm going to give you 49 bucks. And so we're going to create an army of affiliates promoting our product, right? So rather than you being the typical affiliate where you have to go around and promote a bunch of people's products and then you got to go get traffic and get them sent to your affiliate links, we're flipping the whole thing and reversing it. Now you have an affiliate program and you're saying, I'm going to pay a hundred percent commission for any affiliate out on the internet who promotes my course and gets me a customer. Now, do you think 100% commission is going to be interesting to an affiliate? <laughs> Absolutely it is. And it's easy to recruit affiliates to promote your new course business because you're giving away 100% commissions and you get free traffic now because of that. Floods of free traffic will come to your course business because of this. They will buy your course. Your course can be 100% created by AI if you do it with push button AI. They'll still send traffic. You still, you know, get all that stuff. You collect their email address and their information and you send them into your course. So let's continue. So now you partner with influencers, people that have YouTube channels in your niche market, people who have Instagram, they have a big Instagram following. Maybe they're on TikTok. Maybe they've got a big email list. Maybe they've got a blog. Maybe they've got a website that gets a lot of traffic. You go around and you find all of these people that have access to the traffic that you want. And you say, hey, I will give you juicy 100% commissions if you send me traffic. And they will say yes. Now, some are going to say no, right? It's a, it's a little bit of a numbers game. You contact them and you say, hey, send me traffic. I'll pay you 100% commission. Many of them will say yes, okay? And we're actually, we're essentially breaking even on the course sales, right? So we sell a course, we get nothing from it, but the customer, we get the buyer, we get the, the we're building a buyer list, we're building an email subscriber list, and we now have people going through our courses and taking our training. And now this is where the profit kicks in. This is where the chain reaction begins. So now you've got a bunch of affiliates, a bunch of influencers, a bunch of people out there sending you free traffic. And then every time someone buys your course, they're clicking on your affiliate links and you are earning all the commissions for that. That all goes in your pocket. So you, you're basically, it's like laundering the traffic, right? You're getting free traffic and then you're flipping it around and sending them off to your own affiliate links and you keep all of those commissions. So you got free traffic, you got free subscribers on your email list, and you now earn all the commissions while they go through your site, your course, and if you want to send them emails to your subscriber list, right? And this list is valuable. There is nothing more valuable in an online business than a list of buyers. If you've got a, a list of subscribers who just subscribed for free, that's great and everything, but it is nothing compared to a list of buyers. These are people that have proven to reach into their wallet, get out their credit card and buy your course. 
So do you think they're likely to go uh, buy products when they click on your commission links? Absolutely, they will. Okay. So we can keep following up with this buyer list by email. So not only will they go in my course, can I earn a commission, but now I can follow up with them forever by email, promoting even more affiliate links. So like in my golf example, let's say I wanted to promote certain clubs that, that someone might want to buy, right? I can link to my affiliate commission link and get paid commissions when people buy the clubs. Let's say I want to link to gear, you know, stuff you might want to wear and fashion while you're out on the, you know, playing golf. I get paid commission for that forever. Now, most people think you earn commissions this way, right? You get your affiliate link, maybe you buy some traffic and you send traffic to uh, an offer and you get paid a commission, okay? So what we've done here is we have a two level commission stack, right? Because what you're doing is, and let me explain this because this could be a little bit of a complicated concept, right? It's quite simple once it once it clicks. Once you get it, it's it's very simple. But let me let me try to walk through this a little more. You have a course, you're you, you're selling it for let's say forty nine dollars. You're giving away a hundred percent commission. Okay, why do you do that? Well, that's to get a bunch of people excited to send you free traffic. They're going to send you floods of traffic that's going to come to your website, buy your course sign up to your mailing list and go through your course, right? So now you've got all of the, you've got a captive audience. You haven't made any money yet because you paid 100% commission to all the people that sent you the traffic, right? They sent you floods of traffic. You paid them 100% commission and now you've got a captive audience, okay? Think about it that way. You've basically, you've grabbed that audience. They're now yours. They're captive. They're going through your course. They're on your list. And now anything you promote to them you keep all the money, right? So if you want to promote your own products, let's say you have a, a, a company that sells all kinds of dog products, right? Pet products, pet toys, pet food, whatever. You have a, pro a course about how to train your dog. You give away all the profits to the affiliates who send you traffic. And now you take those buyers and you promote your products, right? Or you promote affiliate links. So it's like, uh, it gets kind of complicated, right? You have a traffic coming in that you're paying money out for, you break even, and now you have this free captive audience. You now promote stuff to that captive audience, and that's where you make your profit. Does that make sense? Let's continue. So this is the example of what we are doing. So we have a bunch of people who promote us. So instead of us having to, you know, spend a bunch of time and money and energy promoting other people's affiliate links to get traffic. We get all the traffic. Does that make sense? Hopefully that's, that's uh, clearing things up for you. And when you do this, you get to have a consistent, steady amount of revenue coming into your business because you put the work in once and you get to get paid over and over again. So instead of trading money for time, you're actually leveraging this. You're leveraging all the free traffic that you're getting. Even though you're paying out 100% commission, it's now turned on this chain reaction where people are pushing tons of traffic to you and now you're making money on anything you promote over and over and over again. This is how you get time freedom. It's by leveraging things like this and doing clever strategies like this. Buy yourself more time. And this is the closest thing to a hands-free business that I have seen, okay? So let's recap. You're going to pick a niche market with high ticket affiliate programs. And we're going to go, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in a moment. We're going to show you step-by-step -step how to pick your niche market. We're going to create a digital course that solves an important problem or helps them achieve a goal in that market, okay? So it might be like, you know, how to get started playing golf for, for a busy executive, right? So let's say there's an, an executive who really wants to learn how to play golf because he knows that it's a great way to network with other business owners, but he doesn't know how to play. So we create a guide, a training course, a how-to showing him how to get started with golf. Well, now if he's learning how to play golf, we know that he's going to need to buy stuff, right? So we've got our golf course that we have listed. Um, we load that course up 
with commission earning links and we sell that course, let's call it $49, okay? We offer 100% commissions to sell that course. So now golf channels on YouTube, um, golf influencers on Instagram, uh, golf blogs, people that have golf newsletters, all of these people are sending us free traffic because they want a bite at those juicy 100% commissions. There's nothing better than that for, an, for somebody to earn affiliate commissions is 100% commission. They're going to love that. And they're going to promote you and send you a bunch of buyers to buy that golf training course. Make sense? So now you've got that captive audience. Now we can start making profit, which goes into the step six. Okay. So we partnered with our influencers and we've got free traffic coming in. Now, all the links in our course are landmines. Every time someone clicks them and buys a product out of our course, we get paid. Also, we've built a subscriber list. And every time we want to send an email to promote a product or service to that email list, we get paid. Okay? We have bribed all the influencers, all the affiliates out there to send us buyers and to help us build our list. So we've built our list and we have a captive audience and it has cost us nothing. You getting why that's so powerful? Think, think about that again. You have a captive audience of buyers who are willing to pay you money and get out their cards and buy information in a, a valuable niche markup. You have them as a captive audience. You also have them on your email list and it costs you nothing to get them. That's where you're at. And now everything you promote to them, you get paid on. So you're making all your money on the, the back end, so to speak, right? You hear about back end sales. This is an example of that. This is a, a, a very kind of ingenious back end that we have here, but it is a back end way of making money. So you're breaking even on the front end. You're getting lots of buyers, lots of traffic, lots of subscribers, all for free. You break even, and now you make all your money on the back end with your with uh, your links. Now, I want to remind you that if you're not a pushbutton.ai member, that you need to attend our free class. And you can find out about, right now we have a closed uh, private beta program. Um, it's not available to everyone. You can attend the class, learn more about how Push Button AI can build your entire course business for you. That's the hardest part of all of this is to just build the whole course because you have to create a valuable course that you can sell. So it usually needs to be at least 10 lessons of training. It should have video. It should have audio. You need all of that in order to run this business model. So if uh, you'd like a quick push button way to launch an entire business, hosting set up, all the tech stuff set up, launch live on the internet, ready to start taking orders, then you should join our free class. Go to pushbutton.ai slash free class and learn more about that and see if you can qualify to be part of our private beta test. Okay, back to the presentation. So what we are going to do next is we are going to pick a niche together. So let's go through how we pick our commission chain reaction niche. Is it niche or is it niche? I don't know. But uh, either way, we're going to pick one together. But remember, the two big problems that you're going to face is it is it is hard. I just want to be honest here. I want to be completely transparent. It's not easy to create a valuable course that you can sell online. It's hard also, right? Because if we're going to pay commissions, we have to track those commissions. So not only do we have to set up an entire course and sell it and have a shopping cart and all of that, we have to actually track the affiliate program. Because if we're going to pay out 100% commissions, we have to track them. Well, and that's the beauty of this, because up until now, building a course like this took forever and was very expensive. Now, this is an ex a real example of how much it can cost to set up and build and launch a digital course business. It's $8,750 to get a site up, launched, and written because you got to write sales pages. you got to write your, your opt-in pages. They call them squeeze pages to get people to subscribe. We often give away free reports. We got to create our course. We have email follow-up sequences and all the stuff you need 
to get started. That's usually what it costs, okay? Now with AI, that can all be done at a fraction of the cost, and that's what push button AI is all about. So we will build a 12 lesson course that contains 20 to 30,000 words of training at the push of a button. It can write your sales pages. So when it comes to selling your course, it'll write your sales pages for you. It can create free reports. You can create your opt-in pages, create videos, audiobooks, email campaigns, ads for use in social media if you want them. And you just sit back and let AI do it. It also sets up all your hosting, picks your domain name, launches your business, and gets it online all while you launch. Wouldn't that be cool? So it does all of that, sets up your hosting, builds your website, gets it all ready, and you're ready to actually start making profit. So now the AI can also install your affiliate management system. So if you want to pay, get 100%, you know, you're going to pay out 100% commission to get all your free traffic, you got to track it. Well, we do that too. Push Button AI also installs a fully fledged affiliate management system on your site. There's a screenshot from it right there. That's what it looks like. It tracks everything. It tracks when people send you free traffic. It tracks when they make sales. It even helps you pay your 100% commissions to your affiliates. Here's another example. This shows all the transactions coming in. It tracks everything and does it all for you so that you don't have to worry about that stuff. It'll track it. It'll help you pay your affiliates. It'll keep them happy because they can see all their stats. They can see how many clicks they sent you, how many sales they made, how much money they're owed. So attend our free masterclass and find out if you qualify to join our beta test. And that's at pushbutton.ai slash free class. Okay. So we're going to continue on and keep doing training. Um, I'm going to show you how we pick our niche market. That's what we're getting into next. But for those of you who are not yet push button, not AI members, you're going to want to go there, attend our masterclass. You get to watch and see all about how push button AI works. What does it do? Um, and you'll be blown away at the quality of sites, the quality of content, the videos, the audio. It builds it all for you, all done by AI. So you can see that for your own eyes. Find out if you're qualified to be part of our beta test. And you can learn more right there. So it's just pushbutton.ai slash free class. All right. So, oh, that's interesting. So my, my slides are missing a very important slide. So I don't know maybe why it's missing. Let's see here. Huh. Okay, I think perhaps when my computer crashed. So note for editor, we'll have to edit this out. But I don't know why. It's completely missing my slide. Okay. Okay, I'll have to we'll have to recreate the slide and we can pretend it's on the screen. Okay. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna end this presentation now. Let's get this one off here. And so let's go through what makes a perfect niche market for the uh the of the commission chain reaction. Okay, so we're going to do that now. Um, I've prepared a special sp a spreadsheet that um, calculates th this for you and helps you pick a niche market. So I'm going to pull up the spreadsheet. I'll show it to you. Um, all of the push button AI customers, you're going to all get a copy of this spreadsheet. I'll share it with you in your members area. But it's um, it's pretty simple, really. But let's go back to sharing the screen and I'll get my little thing here. And basically, we're going to fill this out and you're going to want to ignore there's a bunch of errors here on this final column here we're going to ignore those just pretend they're not there they're invisible and what we're going to do is we're going to brainstorm out a bunch of niche markets and what we're looking for is a combination 
of these four factors. First, is it high ticket? And, and you know what? Maybe I'm going to zoom in and make this bigger so it's a little easier for the audience at home to read. There we go. So we're going to pick our niche and we're going to evaluate it by these four things. First, is it high ticket? So are we going to earn enough commissions? Do people buy things over and over again? That's another important part here. We don't want things that just people buy at one time and then they're gone forever. Okay. Are there good affiliate programs in our niche? That is really, really important. And I'll show you the resources that I use to find them. Okay. We're going to cover that in a moment as well. And then finally, are there goals that people have that they really want to achieve or problems that they really want to solve in that niche market? Okay. And so as an example, let's do a quick evaluation and we'll start on that example I've been giving you was golf. Okay. So let's start with that. So first of all, we're going to rate from a, a ranking of one to 10 with 10 being best is golf, a high ticket market. And I'd like to ask my live audience, what, do you, what would you rate golf in terms of, do you think it's a high ticket market? Rate it from one to 10, 10 being best. Pop that into the chat here with the, the live audience. Yeah, one to 10, 10 being best. Do you think golf is a high ticket market? And uh, I'll give a moment for those to come in. And uh, yeah, Kay got it right. <laughs> Kay, right on, first, one, first answer right on the money. Um, but uh, yeah, it's okay. We got a 10, we got a nine. Uh, okay, good. You guys, you guys got that. So let's actually give it a, I'm going to give it a nine. Let's give it a nine. Just, just to be a little conservative. Um, golf has a lot of high ticket stuff. Okay. And next up, do, would a golfer buy a lot of stuff? You know, again, rank it from one to 10. Do you think they're just going to buy things one time and be done? Or do you think they're likely to buy a lot of things over their career as a as a golfer, what would you guess there? So rank that again at one score of one to ten. How likely are they to buy more stuff? Okay, um, and then uh, I see Blake. Blake must be a golfer. I bet you. <laughs> um, Blake rates it a ten, a nine. Okay, I'm going to be a little more conservative, but yes, that this is a highly repeat business. Okay, I'm going to give it an eight. Okay, so next up, we have to do some research for this one. You know, with um, B and C, you can kind of, you can do just a little bit of Googling, just looking at products, um, seeing what's out there. You know, it's just some quick Google research will help you with these. But for, for column D here, whether it's a good affiliate program, we're going to have to use some tools to look this up. So let me get the, the tool that I'm going to use here and I'll bring it around. All right, so I have five tools that I use to research affiliate programs. They're all very similar. They, they search a little bit of different data. They're affiliate search engines, okay? The first one here is at WowTrack. And again, I'll share all these resources, all the links I'm going to share with everyone um, who is a channel member or a Push Button AI customer. We'll get the links to all of these. But it's uh, WowTrack. It is AF Plus, AF Bank. Aff paying and offer vault. Okay. Those are the ones that I like to use. So let's do just a quick search. Let's just say we're going to search the United States and we're going to search golf. Okay. Okay. Well, here's some things to win. Uh, let's see. What is it? This one here sports streaming for golf. Okay. Not a lot came up in this one. Let's try this one. Let's do. Sunday golf. Okay, here's one here. Okay, this says the average order value is $130. We've got, we got a little info there. I'm going to type in golf here. Interesting. So we have, uh, I don't know what Melbit is. That's interesting. Um, OK, 
Okay, so, oh, it's actually asking, it's trying to give me to sign up to, to do further. Let's go on to the next one. So let's go to off. And showing, oh, there's a few things showing up here. It's actually less showing up than I thought that there would in these networks, but we're gonna look here. Okay. A lot of sports, looks like sports bet if, betting maybe, I don't know, and a lot of these networks. Um, and then there's a few other places we can look as well. So um, let's see, uh, I'm trying to think of the other network, Sharasail. Oh, actually, less is coming back on this than I thought. Um, So share a sale is a network that has a lot of physical products. So uh, okay, actually, it's going to make me. They changed this as well. I used to be able to search share a sale. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's going to make me log in. So, um, well, you can create a share sale account and, uh, and search in there, but they have a lot of physical products as well. And um, I'm, I'm actually really surprised I'm not getting more golf um, affiliate programs. So I'm actually coming up a little, this is surprising. Um, And let's try one other one. Let's try searching ClickBank. We go to the ClickBank affiliate marketplace. And we want to go to the marketplace. Where is the marketplace? Oh, they've hidden it. Okay. So here, we're going to have to go to Google to find their marketplace. Let's see. There we are. So the ClickBank Marketplace, we can come in here. Oh, they've locked it. This is all new. I just looked at the market, the marketplace here. One second. Oh, this is. Okay. I just looked at the marketplace. Okay, here we go. So let's do a search here. And so this is more of what I'm used to seeing. I don't know why golf is not showing up in the other networks more, but um, you can see there are a ton of different golf products for sale here, okay? Um, so here's an example of one that is selling a driver and you make 72 bucks on average commission, okay? So that qualifies, okay? Um, so where did it go? Okay. Yeah. So here's the offer. So, uh, of course, while I'm here, while I'm here live on camera, that, uh, the, this thing doesn't want to work the way I, <laughs> the way I thought it would. But so normally when we search a niche like that, I can tell you golf is a good niche. Um, and I do know that there are many different affiliate programs, physical products, and other things that you can sell to the golf niche. And so you want to want to use these tools, do a little bit of Google searching, and try to see if you can find programs that you can promote. And if you can't find anything, like you've done your, your homework and you've looked and you just really can't find anything, give it a low ranking. If you can find good affiliate programs to promote, then you go to your spreadsheet and you give it a high ranking. And so let's go do that now. Okay. So I'm gonna move that up and out of the way. And here's our sheet. So let's say in this case, you know, I, I, I know that if I spent more time, I would find more, but right now I'm not seeing a lot. So I'm gonna give it a four, right? We'll just, just, I'm just gonna go based on what I see right now, okay? 
Next up, this takes a little bit of logic. So we have to rank, again, on a, on a, a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, are there problems that people need to solve in golf? And are there goals that they want to achieve? And uh, if there are, if there are lots of problems and goals, we give it a 10. And if there aren't hardly any, we give it a 1. Okay. So I know golfers are always trying to improve their game in a lot of different ways. So this, this niche has a pretty good ranking, even if we give it a seven, let's just say, okay? Well, over here on the far right column, it's gonna average your score across all of these and give you an average score. And so we go through our list of niches and we just rank them like this. So we might go on and we might do dog training, okay? And high ticket is eh, it's not so much. So we'll give it a five. Repeat purchases, that's high. We, we might give that an eight. Are there good affiliate programs? I know there are, so we might give that an eight, right? Are there problems and goals to solve? I'm going to give that a 10, right? So you can see dog training. There we go. Is um, a pretty good one too, right? And you would just go through this process, do the research, and fill out all the different niches you're thinking about, okay? Um, let's try... Crypto, okay, high ticket. Oh, there's tons of high ticket courses in crypto. Give it a nine. Repeat purchases, yes. When someone gets hooked and gets into crypto, they buy lots of stuff. Give it a nine. Are there good affiliate programs? Absolutely, there are. Let's even give it a, let's give it a seven, okay? Problems and goals to solve. Uh, yeah, people are trying to figure out how to make, you know, make money with crypto and how to invest and all of that. I might give it a little bit of a lower ranking. So let, let's say we're going to give it, um, I'm going to give it an eight. Okay. All right. Well, we got an 8.25. Okay. But now what you do is you fill out this sheet, ranking it by averages, you know, and just do all the niches you might want to cover after you do your research and fill this out. And now you have an actual number to score them based on. Right. So now you can go, okay, well, in this case, I want to do crypto or you know, if you see that the, there's a niche that you really, really wanted to go into, and let's say you love, um, I don't know, let's say, um, recipes. Let's say you really wanted to go into recipes, you know. Are there high ticket? Eh, not so much. Um, are there repeat purchases? Yeah, that's pretty good. Good paying affiliate programs? Not so much, okay. Are there problems and goals to solve? I mean, I wouldn't really call them problems. People do like to cook good food. Give it a four, all right? So then we can clearly see that even though maybe we really, really love recipes and would like to do a site on recipes, eh, is it going to score high? Not so much. So this is the process that you go through in terms of trying to decide whether or not the niche market is the right one for you, especially for the aff affiliate chain reaction training. And so does that make sense? I, I want to make sure that uh, this is all coming through correctly with our live audience that's here. Um, anything about the niche selection of picking a commission chain reaction niche that you guys want clarification on? So let's go back to live questions. We're going to get our questions answered um, here. Uh, Nick, can you come back on mic for me? And uh, let's do any questions you have on niche selection um, an affiliate chain reaction. Well, let's cover that. And so what we'll be doing from this point um, is those of you who are in the, who want to implement the affiliate, uh, the, sorry, the commission chain reaction training, you guys will all pick your niches this week. And then in next week's training, we're going to keep moving on and I'll, I'm going to walk you through this entire process um, as we go. So your action items for this week, for this training is to um, figure out what niche you want to go into and use this neat niche sheet, which we'll put in your members area so that you can, um, so that you can do that. I'll give you a, I'll give you this uh, sheet. I mean, you can build your own. It's not hard to do, but I'll share it for those of you who want it. It'll be in your members area, but that is the process. So let me know any questions that you have about the affiliate chain reaction uh, concept or uh, about picking your niche for this type of a business. Um, so Nick, are you out there? Yep. Okay, cool. We got anything to cover? Any questions? Yeah, we had a question earlier on in the training 
And you may have answered it since, but I'll read it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the question. It says, what is the best way to find high ticket affiliate products to sell? I'm in the, the health and skincare niche. Well, I would use those. I gave five examples uh, of, of those searches that I would use that. Um, so use those. Um, and again, all the links for all of those will be in the members area and we're going to share it with our channel members, but, um, but use those resources. Uh, you can check ClickBank also just some good old Google foo, right? Go to Google, type in your niche market or the names of the products that you want to, you know, you're interested in and put affiliate program at the end. So you might go like golf affiliate program and just spend a little bit of time researching on Google, um, to find those. And uh, if you don't have the time to do that, you can also, there's tons of Fiverr. You can hire someone on Fiverr for just, you know, 10 bucks or less, and they'll go do the research for you. You just tell them, hey, go to Google, find me all of the top affiliate programs for golf, and they'll go do that for you. And you can just hire a, a virtual assistant to do it. That's the other way to go about that. Uh, and then they'll give you a list, you know, a spreadsheet back. So um, that would be what I would do. What other questions do we have? Yeah, so Jay, well, it's not quite a question, but we have a suggestion mm, sure. from uh, Jay. And he says, how about using AI to do the niche research? Yes, that is one way to do it. I think when it comes to especially you, uh, the AI is going to have general knowledge about the prices of things. So you can ask it for high ticket markets it can totally work. Uh, also, if you're trying to find out if the, your market has unique problems to solve or goals, that's great for AI. Um, you know, I'm looking at some of the other ones, trying to determine if they're repeat purchasers, if they're good affiliate programs. Eh, you might want to do a little bit of manual research, but I think for some of this, absolutely, that's a fantastic idea. You could just, um, you know, have a, have a conversation with ChatGPT and ask it and you'll get a lot of good data that way. Cool. Anything else? Yeah, we have a question about, you know, you have an affiliate deal and you're getting traffic and you're getting conversions uh, and you're racking up a balance. Uh, but they have the question of how often do these affiliates get paid? Most programs pay out monthly. Um, that is pretty typical. Um, ultimately, it's up to you. Um, we set up the affiliate management system and you could go in and change the settings to change it. You could pay every two weeks, you could pay weekly, you can pay monthly. It's really up to you. Um, and uh, I find monthly is the pretty much the standard. Um, if you want to really attract a lot of affiliates, you can pay more frequently. It's a little more work because you got to go in and make the payments, but um, you know, the system tracks it all. So you know exactly how much to pay to who, and it keeps track of who's been paid and how much, you know, but you'll have to send the money to them. Cool. Anything else? No. All right. Then we will also open it up to general questions. Um, all right. Cool. I don't know. And Nick, I don't know if you just sent me that message. It just came through for some reason. But Oh, um, disregard that. It's fine. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Well, then uh, we're going to do open questions. I'll do a final round of Q&A here, and then we're going to be wrapping things up. Yeah. So um, any questions at all on the commission chain reaction on, um, um, on anything we talked about today or anything at all that I can help you with, with building your business, growing your business, getting it launched, getting it established, Anything about marketing, traffic generation, sales and persuasion, any of that stuff that you have, anything you need help with, ask now before we wrap things up today. So this will be our final round of questions because I'm out of coffee. I, don't know, I, can't, I can't keep going without some more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I keep picking up the cup, trying to drink from it, and it's, it's, it's empty, as you can hear. Um, all right. Any questions come in? So I don't know if this is a, 
customer service related question or this is more related to the training it's a push button ai question mm -hmm. and they say how long is the turnaround time on producing the quote unquote add-on packets it varies but i can tell you i'm glad in, in fact i'm glad you said that because all of the push button ai customers who are here right now if any of you have sites that you haven't submitted uh for your add-ons do it now. Right now, we have a really quick turnaround time. So I do want to say, I got I to gotta have a little disclaimer, turnaround times vary based upon demand, okay? Um, there is a lot of stuff that goes into creating your add-ons. And so for the some of you who are not buyers or not part of Push Button AI, you might be wondering what we're talking about. So we have a process where um, our customers can go in and, and request a package of all this stuff. They can request uh, we create a dozen videos, a dozen audios, 30 days of emails, and a bunch of stuff that we create for our beta testers. Um, and it's uh, based on demand. So you come in and you say, hey, I want my add-ons. And then, you know, the process starts and it can be it can be quite lengthy. And part of the process actually has manual steps. So um, the video generation, for example, is a manually, like a human supervised process. So humans are actually... There's an editorial process where they have to reject stuff. If the AI does something weird that we know that we know is not going to be good, it, the human editorial rejects it before it ever gets to you. So that time frame varies. Right now, um, we have a two-day turnaround time. Um, in fact, I, I think I think I saw one get done even with a one-day turnaround this week. So right now, turnaround times are really fast. When we first started our beta program, um, it took a long time. We had a bit of a backlog, but right now turnaround times are incredibly fast. Now that is subject to demand, and uh, that timing will vary. So, if you uh, if I create a stampede of people asking for add-ons, it might it might backlog just a little bit. But right now, I'm going to call it a two day a two business day turnaround time, um, and again, that will vary based upon demand. Uh, but now is a great time for those of you, if you haven't yet requested your add-ons, now is a perfect time to do so. You can get a very quick turnaround. So I would recommend you go do that um, and uh, yeah, and go request your add-ons. Next question. So I like this question a lot and mm. maybe we can make some content on this in the future, elaborating mm -hmm. on this. But um, Joan asks, what is the best way to approach influencers on YouTube? Um, you know, the best approach is I, I like to do a, an omni-channel approach. So when I find a YouTuber, there's – I do – and I'm going to get to this, by the way. It's going to be part of our commission chain reaction training. Um, so, so, yes, Nick, we will cover this in a lot more detail. I'll be showing everyone how to find influencers, how to vet them, how to know whether they're good – if there's someone you should talk to and then how to find all their contact information. Okay. So I like to get all their contact information, their socials, right? Are they on Instagram? Can you DM them there? Can you DM them on Facebook? Maybe you find their LinkedIn where you can, you know, maybe you can get them there, you know, Twitter, like everywhere I can possibly reach out to somebody, including phone and email. I want all contact channels. Now the easiest is to send them a cold email and just do an introduction um, and usually we'll send out a series of emails um, of anywhere from three to as many as seven emails, inviting them to, uh, you know, promote and uh, um, and be part of our affiliate program. Um, but uh, yeah, so I start with email and then depending upon your comfort level of what you want to do, you know, you can get into sending them private messages, direct messages on their socials. Um, many of them you can find a contact number for and you can call them up. Um, again, it just depends on how, you know, how aggressive you want to be and what you're comfortable with. And, and I am doing training, so we will be covering that in much more detail um, in one of the coming up, the future modules. You ready for the to take on the next question? Yes, please. Okay. So we have a question that says, where is the best place to house multiple courses built up, bu built out on push button AI? As in, I'm building a few courses in different topics in the same niche. 
Well, right now, Push Button AI will build a separate website for each one, okay? Um, there is a new feature that is not ready for release yet. Um, and in fact, I think next week I can give you a release date, but it's not ready yet. That will allow you to create, it will allow you to create courses without having to build a site. Right. And then you there's so you'll have more options soon, I guess is my point. I think I'll just leave it at that. So um we're we're at least a week, probably two weeks out uh before I can release that to you. But you will have more options. But as of right now, it is one course per website that is built. Um, now, there are some, you can manually create additional courses, but the automated, 100% automated kind of hands-free thing, it's one course per domain name. But you're also unlimited. So you can build as many as you want. You can make, you know, what is it, $13 a year to get a domain name. So you know, for 13 bucks a year, you just have multiple domains, all, you know, all with their own unique course. So that, that's what option you have right now um, to do that in the in the current system. We have a question. Uh, I missed it and I just got back to it. Um, so I'll just read it verbatim. It's kind of a okay. longer one. So they say, can you do an intro course with 100% commission then course two, course three, course four, then mastermind group, and last VIP mentorship. So it's like an endless ladder about a general topic, like a university. You could, you could, yeah, yeah. You could have um, um, definitely have other things. I mean, you, one of these concepts is that you can build a business around this. It doesn't have to be just affiliate commissions. So you can sell anything you want to that captive audience, right? The, the really the, the magic of this this we'll call it a trick is that you're getting a lot of traffic and you have you're building your own captive audience of buyers that you control right and, and to that captive audience of buyers you can promote anything you want you can promote another higher ticket course you could promote masterminds you can promote your own physical products your own services you know, um, heck, even if you have a bricks and mortar service company, you could promote it. Like there's no limit to what you could promote to that audience because they're your captive audience. Anything else? This looks like it's it's so far. Okay, cool. Well, then I think we're going to wrap it up on that. We've been on here for what feels like an eternity to me. I've been yeah, talking two and for a half a hours <laughs> over two and a half hours, actually. Yes. Yes. So I wanted to get this recorded. It's training. I had promised everyone. So I wanted to make sure we crammed it in. So apologies for the length of the training today, but I hope you got value out of it. So before we end off, let me know in the chat. Did you guys get any value out of today's training? Did you learn anything new? Did you get something that is useful to your, entrepreneurial career from today's training. I hope I was helpful. It is my mission to always provide value and always provide help when we have interactions together. So I hope I achieve that today. And yeah, just let me know how I did in the chat. And uh, on that note, I want to thank everyone who tuned in today for our marathon of a show. And Nick, especially, thank you for helping out with questions and producing the show today. And on that note, we're going to head out of here. Bye for now.